Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x plus 6 to the power x equals 12 to the power x, and we're going to be looking for x values. So let's go ahead and look at this problem from two different angles. First method. I'm going to go ahead and notice that uh, 3 to the power x is a common factor because 6 to the power x can be written as 3 to the power x times 2 to the power x and 12 to the power x can be written as 3 to the power x times 4 to the power x since 12 is 3 times 4 and 6 is 3 times 2. So that gives us a common factor which is 3 to the power x. Let's go ahead and factor this expression. So we can write this as 3 to the x, 2 to the x and this as 3 to the x, 4 to the x. And then we're going to go ahead and factor out a 3 to the power x. That's going to give us 1 plus 2 to the power x equals 3 to the power x times 4 to the power x. Now we have two choices here. Either 3 to the power x equals 0 or these two things are equal. And you could easily see that by basically putting everything on the same side. Let's go ahead and put this on the right hand side. We get 3 to the x, 4 to the x, minus 3 to the x, multiplied by 1 plus 2 to the x equals 0. It's better to get a 0 here. And then take out 3 to the power x, and you're going to get 4 to the x, minus 1 minus 2 to the power x, because you have to negate both terms, and that's equal to 0. So here you can clearly see that this must be 0, or this must be 0. But think about it, can 3 to the power x be 0? not for any real values. 3 to the power x can never be 0. How about complex values? It can't be 0 for, uh, for complex values either, can it? Something to think about. But we don't have any real solutions, so we're just going to discard it. And look at the second one. 4 to the x minus 1 minus 2 to the x equals 0. Now, in this problem, even though everything is exponential pretty much, we can turn this into a quadratic equation by way of substitution. So let's go ahead and use it. Set this equal to something. How about y? We get y squared minus 1 minus y equals 0. It's better to write it as y squared minus 1, y minus 1 equals 0. Do you smell golden ratio? Okay. Now, how do you solve this quadratic equation? First of all, notice that the product of the roots is negative, so one of the roots is going to be negative. And what is y? y is 2 to the power x. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve this using the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times negative 1, which is 5. Great. So from here, you hopefully see the golden ratio connection. And we get two values. y sub 1 is 1 plus root 5 over 2. And y sub 2 is 1 minus root 5 over 2. There are two solutions and one of them is negative. What is that supposed to mean? It means that when you set the y equal to 2 to the power x, you're going to run into a problem. Because you're not going to get any real solutions. Because 2 to the power x for real values of x must be greater than 0, but 1 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 0, right? Obviously, root 5 is greater than 1, so the difference is negative. So what do you do? Well, there are no real solutions, so we can go ahead and proceed with the first one and then look at the second one from a complex perspective. But if we have 2 to the power x equals 1 plus root 5 over 2, you can basically ln both sides, natural log that is, and then get the answer in terms of ln, something. And here x moves to the front. We get x times ln 2 equals ln 1 plus root 5 over 2. And by division, we get x equals ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 divided by ln 2. You could also write this as log with base 2 of 1 plus root 5 over 2. It's the same thing. All right? Cool, cool. Now, that is the result, and looks like we only got one real solution. We're going to look at this. Uh, we're going to look at the graph of something, uh, which is something we're going to use in second method, and then hopefully 
we'll get a better idea. But let's go ahead and take a look at the y sub 2, which is negative. So what happens if 2 to the power x is equal to 1 minus root 5 over 2? Obviously, when you take the ln of a negative number, you're going to run into issues. Why? Because ln is only defined for positive numbers, but that's in the real world. In the complex world, you can take the complex logarithm. And to be able to take the complex logarithm, it's better if you can write it in the E form or the Euler num Euler's number form. So any complex number z can be written as r, which is the modulus times e to the power i times theta. Obviously, you can also add multiples of 2 pi for the all the branches, but we're basically looking at the principal branch right now. And the theta is going to be the angle that the, uh, the number z makes with the positive x-axis. All right? Cool. So if you have a complex number that looks like this, this is going to be theta, and this is going to be r. Make sense? That's how we can express them in exponential form. But this is, at the same time, a real number, right? So a real number has a zero imaginary part, which means they're going to be on the x-axis, like this. Obviously, in this case, we have a 1 minus root 5 over 2, which is a negative number, so it's going to be on the other side. And its angle is going to be pi radians. Make sense? And the r is going to be the absolute value, and the absolute value of a real number is just going to be the positive version of that number. Okay, so we can basically write this as the absolute value of root 5 minus 1 over 2 multiplied by e to the power i times pi. And obviously, you can add 2 and pi to this to make it, you know, uh, better. So, and <laughs> did I put root 5 minus 1 over 2? Okay, what I meant by that is basically root 5 minus 1 over 2 is positive, so that's what it's going to look like. Make sense? So, and we can also take out the pi if you want, pi times i plus 2n, something like that. Cool, cool. So that's our number, uh, z, and we're going to set it equal to 2 to the power x and see what happens from there. 2 to the x equals root 5 minus 1 over 2 times e to the power pi times i plus 2n. And if you take the natural log of both sides, then you're going to get something super duper nice because ln and Euler's number e uh, are basically going to cancel out. And we're going to get the following. x is going to move to the front. x ln 2 is going to be ln root 5 minus 1 over 2, which is well defined, by the way, because root 5 minus 1 over 2 is positive, plus, because that's a product, so I can kind of write it as ln e to the power of something, and that's going to be pi i plus 2 and pi. I just separated it because I think it looks better that way. And finally, we're going to divide both sides by ln 2, and that's going to give us our complex solution. This is complex, not non-real, because as you can see, we have an i here, so we can write it as a plus b i as well. Make sense? That's the other solution that is not real, but since we have more room for the second method, let's go ahead and clean this page up and do the second method. Then I'm going to show you the graph of the situation. Okay, cool. Now we have uh, 3 to the x plus 6 to the x equals 12 to the x. I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 12 to the x, which is the highest base. Then this is going to be 3 over 12 to the x. This is going to be 6 over 12 to the x, and this is going to be 1. But 3 over 12 is 1, so it's going to be 1 fourth to the power x plus 1 half to the power x equals 1. And now we're going to go ahead and use substitution again. Let's go ahead and call this t. We get t squared plus t equals 1, which we can write as t squared plus t minus 1 equals 0. And this can be solved by the same method, negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is going to give us 5. And then from here, we're basically going to arrive at the same solutions as before. The, ex the only exception is last time we dealt with 2 to the x. This time it's going to be 1 half to the x. So you kind of have to reverse the process. For example, for this one, this is going to be uh, reversed uh, because this is going to be 2 to the power of negative x equals root 5 minus 1 over 2. And then if you raise both sides to the power of negative 1, you're going to get 2 to the x equals the reciprocal of this number. And that's going to give you the exact same results as before. So the real solution is going to be this one, 
Where is my real solution? Okay, the real solution is going to be this one, and the non-real complex solution is going to be this one. And isn't that real cool? And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So in, with the second approach, we have a decreasing function. And a decreasing function is going to intersect the oopsies. With the second method, we have a decreasing function. So the decreasing function is going to intersect the horizontal line at one point. Therefore, we have only one real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.